So now we're going to talk about dopaminergic transmission, which is referring to the neurotransmitter dopamine. Remember that the first step of neurotransmission is synthesis. And we have tyrosine, which is the precursor for dopamine, and that has to be taken up into the nerve terminal by tyrosine transport mechanisms. Once the tyrosine's inside, tyrosine is hydroxylated to form dopa, and the enzyme is tyrosine hydroxylase, abbreviated TH here. DOPA stands for dihydroxyphenylalanine. Remember, tyrosine is a hydroxylated phenylalanine, so once you put an extra hydroxyl group on it, now it has two hydroxyls, hence dihydroxyphenylalanine. DOPA is now decarboxylated to form dopamine, and that enzyme is called aromatic amino acid decarboxylase because it's not totally selective for for dopa, although sometimes this enzyme is called dopa decarboxylase. Once I have my dopamine formed, the dopamine is taken up into the vesicle via vesicular monoamine transporter, which is called VMAT, and now the dopamine is in the vesicle. Remember, in order to release neurotransmitter from vesicle, I need the action potential to transmit down to the nerve terminal, activate voltage-gated calcium channels, Calcium comes in, triggers vesicle fusion and exocytosis of dopamine. Receptor binding is going to be through re dopamine receptors, which all are GPCRs. Now, there's different types of dopamine receptors, and they're coupled to different G proteins, but no dopamine receptors are ligand-gated ion channels. And now I get my biological effect. To terminate dopaminergic signaling, it requires removal of dopamine from the junction. Unlike acetylcholine, which is metabolized in the junction, the dopamine here is taken back up through the dopamine reuptake transporter, DAT, and now it's in the nerve terminal where it can be metabolized into an inactive metabolite by the enzyme monoamine oxidase. Remember, dopamine is an example of a monoamine. Dopamine also could be recycled back through VMAT into the vesicle and participate in another dopaminergic neurotransmission signal. Now, dopamine can also be removed extraneuronally through these extraneuronal transporters, and inside the extraneuronal cells, I have a capability here to do more enzymatic degradation. MAO is also found here, and another enzymatic degradation enzyme, catechol O-methyltransferase, which transfers a methyl group to dopamine. After all, it's a catecholamine forming an inactive metabolite. So to summarize here, I have my tyrosine transporter, which takes tyrosine in. I have two enzymatic steps, tyrosine hydroxylase forming dopa, aromatic amino acid decarboxylase forming dopamine. VMAT, vesicular monoamine transporter, takes the dopamine into the vesicle, and the dopamine is released from the vesicle through an exocytosis process that's calcium dependent. And once dopamine's in the junction, the receptor binding is through the dopaminergic receptors, which sometimes we use the term D to indicate dopaminergic. Remember, they're all GPCRs, no ligand gated ion channels. The removal of dopamine from the junction is accomplished through the dopamine reuptake transporter DAT or extraneural transporters, and there's also enzymatic degradation enzymes, monoamine oxidase, which is found in the dopaminergic nerve terminal and extraneuronally, and the enzyme catechol O-methyltransferase, or COMPT, which is found extraneuronally as well. Let's take a look at adrenergic transmission because it's so similar to dopaminergic transmission. Notice here that the similarities are all the way up to I make dopamine because dopamine is the precursor to norepinephrine, which is what we're referring to when we say adrenergic transmission here. So this extra enzymatic step, dopamine beta hydroxylase, puts a hydroxyl group on the beta carbon of dopamine, forming norepinephrine. So now this is occurring in the vesicle. The, the norepinephrine is released through the same calcium-dependent exocytosis process 
But now the norepinephrine, instead of binding dopaminergic receptors, binds adrenergic receptors, which are also all GPCRs. But the difference here is that they're different types of receptors. They only activate in response to norepinephrine, generally, and they're of the alpha and beta subtype. The norepinephrine is removed from the junction through a norepinephrine reuptake transporter, not a DAT, and the enzymatic degradation process is the same. MAO is an enzyme that can metabolize norepinephrine because it is also a monoamine. Similar to dopamine, norepinephrine can also be recycled into the vesicle because norepinephrine is a monoamine, so it can be recognized by the vesicular monoamine transporter. Extraneuronally, once it's taken up, again, MAO is able to metabolize it, and because norepinephrine is a catecholamine, catecholomethyltransferase can also work on it as well. So when we summarize, like we did for dopaminergic uh, signaling, I have this extra enzyme, dopamine beta hydroxylase, I have adrenergic receptors, alphas and betas, and I have the norepinephrine reuptake transporter, but everything else is really the same, so there's a lot of overlap between adrenergic and dopaminergic transmission.